Hi guys, this is just a little explanation. What you're about to see is a series of uh, clips that came from the training that took place here on the Dynex. Now you may notice that the Dynex model on the film is slightly different from the one that you now have. You now have the 1100, but functionally it's entirely the same ditto the software. So what will happen is there you see these silent um, clips and you'll hear a voiceover, a narration if you wish, actually describing what's going on. What you won't hear probably is the voice of the gentleman or the people in those clips including myself because the sound recording on that day went horribly horribly wrong. Anyway, I hope this is useful. Enjoy. Goodbye. Okay, so when you get there, the instrument should be on, the auto sampler should be on, and the computer should be on, which are the three parts of this system, and everything should be waiting for you. Okay, so your screen might not look exactly like this, with a nice deep brown curtain, blue curtain even, but click the chromelian icon, and Chromelian 7 will start, and it takes a few moments, but eventually you will have the instrument screen. Okay, in a moment you'll see the instrument console, in which case go to the tab at the top, pump ECD, press it, down on the panel, and press the button marked Prime. Right, now click OK in the right hand corner. Now by the time you get there the instrument should be connected and the pump speed and flow rate should have been set but walk through the operating procedure that you have. To prime the pump press OK panel and you can see it's being demonstrated for you now. The left hand pump head which has Prime written on it, turn it to the left two to three times and if you watch it whilst the pump is on you may well see bubbles coming out the bottom. This process is to remove all bubbles from the system otherwise the system will not be able to hold pressure. Okay the priming process will take a couple of minutes. Um, when you see no more bubbles then if you can select the pump and turn it off and you watch the pressure will be quite low at this time. Um, check that the flow rate is at 1.2 and then uh, click the on button and you should see the pressure on the right raise go up somewhere 17, 1800 psi. Let this settle for a few minutes but record this pressure in your notebook. OK. OK, the next stage is to turn the suppressor on, which suppresses the background conductivity, and you do that by selecting the slide switch as shown now. Uh, that will glow green and what we will do now is have a little look at the background um, output from the detector because now the suppressor is working. So you need to select the upper tab which is marked monitor baseline and then when you click that you get a little drop down box and you should select ECD1, which is the detector. You can also detect, select pressure as well if you wish to get both traces uh, on the screen. Now if you watch the orange screen, you'll be able to see the trace happening. And now SoonFat will simply use the screen cursor to blow that up for you so you can see it. And now uh, he's just right clicking on the screen and that will give you a properties box, select properties, and this allows you to see the uh, parameters of the screen, what's actually happening on the screen.
Okay, well, we've sort of done that bit. We can just stop this trace now, and uh, in fact, we'll do that in a moment. The instrument's now running, so we can think about analysing some samples. So we go down to the lower left-hand side and select Data, and we get the Data screen. Now, for your work, you'll find there is a folder set up um, CM3292 uh, where your method is and your results will be stored. But for this demonstration we're showing you something called demo which is a slightly wider analysis the one, than the one you'll be doing. Okay, while this slightly irrelevant stuff to you anyway is going on, I'd like to look at the data table. Uh, the data table is the back of the screen there. You can see that you have a number one, two, three, and then those samples are laid out. Further on, if you look, you have the position in the auto sampler, the volume of sample, and the other aspects of the method. Now, in a moment, we're going to use the blue bar going across the middle to actually add a new injection. But each of these uh, uh, rows are actually a sample or a standard. And you can see on the screen, right clicking on the type box gives you a drop down menu to describe what it is. And in the name, you can click that and rename uh, for whatever it is you're doing. Moving across, level is the level of standard one, two, three, four, five, however many standard points you're going to have. And again, this drop down box. Position is the um, auto sampler uh, position, so you can set that, um, and so on and so forth. Most of these values are default, so your sample is one microliter, for instance, but actually you can make it more if you wish. And of course, after you've finished, then click on the save button there and your changes are saved. OK, so we've sorted out our running order of our samples, now standards, now blanks. Now we actually, and we saved it, so now we actually want to uh, run the samples. For that, uh, you need to go up and select the Start button, which is there. And as you click it, you will see the screen uh, unfolding. What clicking start actually does is it dumps your job into a queue. Um, and there's a little circle I need to take you around. So first we go to home which is this screen and you have an event log. Then pump ECD and then data and this is what we did before when we edited our sampling list. Now select pump ECD and queue. So there are two jobs in the queue. This is where you get to look at those jobs and we only want one. We're going to delete one by selecting remove on the right and we're ready. Back to data and then the start button. You can see that the uh, queue is fine. And now you see the running order. At the moment though, nothing's running, it's all pending. Okay, so now we go down to instrument and there is the queue. And we remove both those items in the queue because we don't want either of them running. What we do want though is if we go to data and there we are, we can see the order and now click start. Now note the bar goes green but it's still not actually running. Um, although it says on the right hand side it's running the equipment is not actually injecting samples and stuff like that. OK, we're nearly there. Now, go back to Instrument. And when you click it, you will see a yellow bar with a button on the right hand side. Click OK. At this point, the instrument begins. OK, so a sigh of relief. It's running. We'll now just look at the baseline as we did before. And you can see the baseline 
appearing about there but it's probably not too much else to show you here I think we've done enough of this the next thing is to show you about getting the data off and uh, such like okay so we'll look at our data we'll go down to data and you'll see our data as it's happening but to get results off we don't want to wait so we'll go to another method um, and we'll show you how to get the results off from there okay so we've got a, a set of samples that already run we can click any of those chromatograms and then come down to the bottom and click the green chromelion icon and we enter into Chromelion Studio. Okay, so we've selected the one PPM chromatogram on the left, and now this gives you the opportunity to analyze or to play with the chromatogram. You can see you can make it larger or smaller, um, and the table below has the normal sorts of things you might expect, peak height, amounts, your, your area, everything that you would normally get out of any normal chromatograph. Okay, but the playing goes quite serious here. Um, you've chosen the chromatograph. Maybe you might click interactive charts, which allows you to do some other things. Or, or then select interactive results. And the chromatogram goes full scale, and maybe you might be interested in the calibration. So you click that, and on the right, you then get the calibration window for any peak you might have clicked and we've just kicked chloride so you've got the chloride calibration curve and then if you click interactive results what will happen is the window will change but this time retaining the calibration with the other data okay so hours of fun however for now we're in a bit of a hurry we just can go back and see how our uh, run is doing Okay, so come down to the bottom left as you get there, the chromelion icon will appear. You see there are two windows, data and chromelion studio. Click data and then click the uh, instrument and you've got our actual chromatogram. First thing here is the water peak, that first negative peak. That shows everything is working. Um, and then we get the other peaks we're interested in. Okay, magically, time has moved on a little and we have now nearly finished. So again, go down to data and you get the current run and you can see this number one is running. The rest are both idle as they're not yet run. Time has moved on. Now the first injection has run. The second green one is running now with the green bar. However, it's time for us to go home. So go up to the green and hit the stop button. These guys are carrying on so we can ignore the film. So after you've hit the stop button, then go to the instrument uh, panel and turn the suppressor control off. Then you can click off on the pump switch and basically you're sorted. What I would suggest is that you actually um, let the thing run for a while just to clear any the pump run for a little while just so it clears anything out the system. Anyway, I think we're done. Goodbye.